So this morning, I came into the studio this morning to practice and I looked out the window and my son's playing out back and it's a beautiful day and I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to be cooped up in here. Let's practice outside. And then I thought, well, this is something actually that presents a lot of interesting things, at least to me, that might be interesting to you as well. So I recorded some of the practice session. So the first thing I do, I sit down and just pick a pattern, something random, but uh, I think I've chose one, three, five, six, nothing fancy about it, but just a pattern to get me centered, get me started. A pattern is uh, a vehicle that can be a lot of things, and it's a, a small bit of information that allows me to do several things at once. It sort of centers me, it kind of quiets down distractions and, and noise and centers me mentally. Physically, the repetition of doing a small thing over and over centers my body, my physicality. <laughs> what did you do? What's it called? Oh. Mentally, again, I can also begin to think, um, you know, while I'm repeating a certain figure, I can begin to have a dialogue internally with myself about what this little thing is and ways I could use it, etc. So there's a lot of benefits to just using a pattern. And after deciding on that pattern, then the next decision I made was which way I wanted to practice it. Did I want to move it in whole steps, half steps, minor thirds, circle of fifths? In this case, I went with circle of fifths. And just a quick side note, I tend to think of the circle of fifths more as fourths. It's sort of interchangeable. If I'm playing something in E and then, then I go to A, you could say, well, yeah, E goes down a fifth to A. That's the circle of fifths. I tend to think of it as ascending. I'm in the bottom of the horn on E and the next place I go is A above that. So I tend to think of it as fourths. So just if you hear me say fourths or fifths, it's somewhat interchangeable. So I'm outside, I'm playing extremely quietly by design. I don't wanna bother anybody. I don't want anybody to hear me practice. Uh, that's one part of it. And this started for me years ago, living in apartments in New York City and continued when I joined John Mayer's band. I was on a big pop tour and in tour buses and hotels and backstage dressing rooms where I had to get some warm-ups in, but I never wanted to bother anybody. I certainly never wanted to be that guy at the end of the hallway in a string of hotel rooms with a bunch of people on a tour together that was annoying the crap out of everybody playing saxophone really loud. So there were there's sort of practical reasons behind a, a, the ability to practice softly, but there is tremendous value I've found uh, from a musical standpoint, physical standpoint, and what it does for my embouchure strength and muscle and endurance and continuity, my breath support and air movement, being able to control the speeds of air at different speeds, different levels, all sorts of things, and keep a consistent tone, measure the amount of tone versus air in the tone, all these different things that are happening and I'm thinking about sonically as I, pl as I play really softly. And I don't have to be outdoors to do this. I'll do this inside as well. But it's just something to I, I throw out there because uh, I find that often it's, it's a component overlooked by a lot of people. And, and it seems sometimes as a negative, like, oh boy, I wish I could just play louder. I, anyway, I, I don't want to get on a tangent about that, but I really like practicing quietly. <laughs> Now you'll notice I have this little, it's called a sound reflector and that's exactly what it does. It just reflects some of the sound back at me as if I were playing up against a wall instead of out into thin air. Now at some point I decided to change up the pattern and I just played something and I stumbled on this little sound that I liked and it was just an interval set. So like major sixth, minor sixth, perfect fifth, minor sixth. <laughs> So you have this little line cliche at the bottom, da, 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 with a consistent interval at the top that you're kind of bouncing back and forth. So in this case, I'm not thinking about it like vocabulary. I'm not thinking, oh, here, wh where will I use this thing over what chord sequence or blah, blah, blah. It's, a, it's an interval set. It's 
it's a lot of things. It's ear training, it's structural recognition. It's just, I don't know what else to call it than those things, but that's part of what I'm getting from it. Again, by deciding on the sequence and then the, or the, the I guess you have the sequence of notes and then the sequence I'm gonna practice those notes in, in this case, circle of fifths, I've eliminated a lot of decisions for myself, thus allowing me to focus on minutia of tone and air and timing, the accuracy of my fingers. So now I, I bring the metronome into the equation. I'm playing at 60 beats per minute, but I have the metronome clicking at 30 so that I'm treating it as beats two and four. Uh, again, the, the slower the metronome is going, the more distance between clicks, the more I have to be responsible for the time. So the more it helps me improve my time rather than if the metronome was clicking a lot. So that's why I do that. Um, now, the, the main important things that I'm, that I'm focusing on at this point are like with this pattern, am I executing it comfortably? Does it feel relaxed and natural? That's the first thing I'm looking for before I move on to the next point. That's what I wanted to say. So I don't have like a, I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm going to play it twice in this key and twice in the next key, or I'll do it five times. You know, it has to be five times perfect before I move on. It's generally not how I think about these things. I tend to play the thing until it feels easy. And that's it. And if it's not feeling easy, I go slower. I cut it in half, I make it smaller, I do something until it feels easy and then I move on. And by feeling easy, I mean that I can execute it physically without as much mental thought as when I started doing it. So the first time I play it, there's a lot of thought. What is this? What do I need to play? But as I improve upon it, it requires less and less mental capacity. And, and I'm more and more at this point, I can focus on whatever the heck my son's doing in the backyard. I'm not thinking about it, but I'm hearing it, right? The same way that you can have a conversation and drive and, it, and they're not mutually exclusive. So you uh, drive a car. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to operate this pattern with ease. And am I there yet? Okay, once I feel like I'm getting there, the next thing is I wanna be able to imagine in full where I'm gonna move this sucker to next. So if I'm doing the thing in E and I know I'm headed to the, the key of A next, that's gonna be my next starting point, can I construct it in A while I'm still performing it in E? So here I am playing, you know, again, the pitch will be off, but I'm going E, C sharp, F, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp, all right? Again, I don't have perfect pitch, so ignore that part, but while I'm doing that, can I now start to think of it based on A, A, F sharp, B flat, F sharp, B, you know, can I put that together in my mind while doing this thing over here? Is that clear? Once I feel like I have that together, then I move to the next sequence or the next part of the sequence. And I'll do the same thing. Once I'm in A, can I put it together in D? When I'm in D, can I put it together in G? So that's what you'll you know, maybe will notice me doing here, or that's, if you're, if you're looking for like, how many times does he play the thing before he moves on? I don't know. That part's flexible. The last thing I'll point out before I just show you the darn session is, you'll notice, again, I'm playing so quietly that you can hear the birds chirping around me, right? You can hear the keys slapping onto the body of the saxophone. Again, very intentional. Uh, here I'm almost practicing it like a drum, like a percussion instrument. I want to hear the sound of those keys hitting the body with force and, and, and be executing it with a relaxed force. I want the finger movement to be really deliberate and strong, but without having to do this. I don't need a lot of runway, like I don't need a lot of, to get up speed for the fingers to push the keys down hard. I want the speed to come right from here, right here. Like I don't need any of this to get the impact that I'm looking for. So you hear this nice popping of the pads hitting the keys or the tone holes, whatever. And it almost becomes like a percussive thing and that in and of itself, that repetition, I'm listening for the sound of of this as much as I am the actual notes or tones coming out of the sequence. So there's like a lot of wonderful things for me wrapped up in a, in a practice like this. Uh, and I hopefully, I, I just wanted to pull some of them out and 
that you that you just wouldn't otherwise know, of course, what the heck somebody's thinking about while they're playing a, a musical pattern like that. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> but not a button now. Oh. So, because this one was not in our button care. <laughs> I do the transforming and you do the breaking? Yeah. Uh huh. Because he has to get into his home. He has to fly ah, I to did it. rescue. I did he it. He has to fly to rescue people and that is his home. Okay. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Are we gonna do this? I think 13 times or 100. 13 times or 100? Yeah. Here, I did it again. Ta da! Feels good to see them all stacked up. See the ones you've read. It really Sense does. of accomplishment. It's gonna be like five bucks in the stack, but it's like thirty-five bucks. Good motivation, right? HUD, what happened to the top of your uh, bamboo structure? Oh, it didn't get drilled in. Oh. No, oh, and also, Aaron told me be careful with the sides of the um, the metal twine. It's a little bit. I need to put tape around them to come around. They're kind of sharp. No, 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 oh, not right now, not right now. I just mean, just be careful until I do that. No, 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 no. I'm just going to do it. Okay. Um, when you have a chance, you definitely should. Okay, I'll come see your stack of books. Come now? Oh. <laughs> 